Quantum mechanics, or QM, is the branch of physics studying the nature and behavior of things at the subatomic level, also commonly referred to as quantum theory or quantum physics. This branch of science became necessary when we first discovered that classical physics simply couldn't account for the baffling, seemingly impossible behavior of matter and energy at the quantum level. Nothing in the universe is truly as it seems. We think of the physical universe being made of physical matter, but the fundamental nature of the universe may not even be physical at all. Our first clue to this was in 1927, when a lab experiment fundamentally changed our understanding of the universe by challenging our very concept of physical reality itself. The entire field of quantum mechanics and everything we'll discuss in this series all goes back to this very experiment, the double slit experiment. To understand this experiment, suppose we randomly shoot particles at a screen with two slits. For each particle shot at the screen, we would expect one of three outcomes. Outcome 1. The particle passes through the right slit and hits the wall behind the screen. Outcome 2. The particle passes through the left slit and hits the wall behind the screen. Outcome 3. The particle hits the screen and thus never comes in contact with the wall behind the screen. Now if we take a look at the wall, we would see a left and a right band corresponding to where the particles that pass through the left and right slits hit the wall. This pattern of two bands is called a blot pattern. But if we partially submerge the screen and the wall and direct a wave toward the screen, the pattern on the wall behind the screen would look much different. When the wave hits the screen, most of it would be blocked by the screen, but some of the wave would pass through the left slit and the right slit. Behind the screen, now there are two waves, one radiating outward from the left slit and one radiating outward from the right slit. As the two waves travel toward the wall, they begin to interfere with each other. Where the high point of one wave comes into contact with the low point of another, they cancel each other out. The merging of two wave peaks become areas of higher intensity in the wave. The lines on the wall represent where two combined wave peaks hit the wall, and the intensity of the line represents the intensity of the corresponding wave peaks. This multiband pattern of varying intensity is called an interference pattern. So particles, which consist of matter, will form blot patterns, whereas waves, which consist of energy, will form interference patterns. Easy enough, right? Well, maybe not. Let me shed some light on what I mean by ironically making things a bit confusing. Ah oh boy, here we go. Light, but what is it? Is it a particle or a wave? It wasn't until about a century ago that this ancient debate was finally resolved. It turns out that light is both a particle and a wave. A photon, as you probably know, is a particle of light. But since light is also a wave, what would happen if we shot photons one at a time at the double slits? Would they behave like particles and form a blot pattern? Or would they behave like a wave and form an interference pattern? This is where things start to get interesting. When this experiment was initially performed, the pattern that began to emerge was that of an interference pattern. Without knowing for sure how single photons were able to create an interference pattern, it seemed that single photons were passing through both slits simultaneously. Now, the only way to know for sure 
was to connect sensors to the slits to confirm when a photon passed through either one. But the moment sensors began measuring photon activity at the slits, something happened that nobody expected. Suddenly, the photons began to behave like particles. I said, what? I dropped my hot pocket. The sensors were detecting that photons were passing through either the right or the left slit, but not both. And the pattern on the wall was no longer that of an interference pattern, but rather that of a blot pattern. It was as if the photons knew we were observing their behavior, and they changed their behavior because of it. Something ain't right. I said, oh man, she said, I dropped my hot pocket. Okay, so photons are technically particles, but since they have no mass, it can't be said that a photon is a particle of matter. Electrons, on the other hand, do have mass and therefore do qualify as physical matter. When the double slit experiment was repeated using electrons instead of photons, the results were the same. Without the sensors hooked up, the electrons behaved like waves and formed interference patterns. With the sensors hooked up and taking measurements, the electrons suddenly went back to behaving like particles and formed blot patterns. This experiment proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that waves of energy can behave like particles of matter, and the particles of matter can behave like waves of energy. This odd quantum quirk of nature is known as wave-particle duality. Whether we're dealing with photons, electrons, or even whole molecules, the principles are the same. Without the sensors to observe or measure which slit they're going through, they behave like waves. But according to the math, things get even stranger. The unmeasured particle, functioning like a wave, is not 100% in any one place, but rather, it exists only as a probability wave. In other words, it exists only as a certain probability in multiple places, with the combined sum of all possible locations or outcomes being 100%. This is called a wave function. Though the exact probability of each outcome varies, each possible outcome is equally as valid as any other. The term for this strange state of being in multiple positions simultaneously is called superposition. This state of superposition is how and why a single particle is able to produce an interference pattern. That is, until a measurement is taken. It is the act of measuring, or observing, that causes the collapse of the wave function and forces our particle to start behaving like itself and choose only one outcome. As I was editing this video, it occurred to me that I'm using the terms observation and measurement synonymously, and I didn't do a really good job of explaining why I'm using the two terms synonymously. Well, in the double slit experiment, in order to observe which of the slits a photon or electron or what have you, I'm rolling up the window because it's noisy outside, in order to observe which slit something is passing through, you have to take a measurement, and that measurement is taken by the sensors. So, within the context of the double slit experiment, measurement and observation are really one and the same. So, that's why I'm using the two terms synonymously. Here's something to keep the minds of my fellow insomniacs occupied the next time you find yourself staring at the ceiling at 4 a.m. Consider the conundrum of the poor, lonely, unobserved electron right as it gets to the double-slit screen. It just doesn't know what to do. But the math tells us that it passes only through the left slit and it passes only through the right slit and it passes through both slits and it passes through neither slit.
try to wrap your mind around that. I dropped my hot pocket. Hey everyone, Drew here from Mad Cat Mysteries, and I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. If you did, you can click on the subscribe button below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.